Yo, what's up guys? It's Pigmento back. This time we got VOD review of Booga. This one was also requested, so if you guys have any requests, leave them in the comments down below. But today, we'll talk about Booga. I'm sure all you guys know who he is, so no introduction needed. But what we'll be talking about is how he rotates by foot, um, what he prioritizes, and how he gets frags and impacts in the late game. So let's watch here. So he landed at the weather station. Which is miles, miles, miles away from here. We can open the map really quick. It's going to be black. That's okay. So we see... Let's find Booga right now. I think he is... Uh, this person. Yeah, right there. That's him. He came all the way from Weather Station, which is over here on my mouse in the storm. So how did he get here so fast to a good position? So he's pretty much in his own right now. Yeah, this is Booga, right? Wait. Yeah. Yeah, right there. That's him. That's Booga. All right. So... How did he get here? He left his spawn early, where he landed. He left his weather station super early, and he just ran by foot. He was able to get some maths and get to this great location. So, now let's talk about priorities. Because obviously, he prioritized his positioning. Because he left early to get to this place where he could refarm, have a height on some other people, because it's on a building, on a mountain, and it's close to Santa Zone. It's not too bad. It's not edge, is what I mean to say. But, so, priorities for Booga. First zone, positioning, mats, and then storm surge tags. That's how it goes for Booga. Um, he was able... Oh, I know, I'm saying his name wrong. My bad. Bugga. My bad. Sorry, guys. Um, he did get a little bit of storm surge tags, but he was mostly focused on just moving on to this position where he will get tags. So, but first off, he has to get the good positioning. He does have the six minis, which is great, and the one big bot. Um, also rocking the SMG. Now, once he's positioned, once he refarms some mats, now he's looking for tags. That's what you'll see. We'll talk about his priorities again once it's in second zone. Actually, pretty much the same. You guys will see Booga every time. Positioning, positioning, positioning. And this is how... You know, he did good in World Cup as well. He had great positioning. Um, he'd get on these hills, and then the hills would pull zone, because that's what hills normally do. So if you're on a hill, there's a higher chance for you to pull zone. Anyways, let's do a little fast forward, because this building looks a little ugly. Uh, a little glitched. That's all good. Um, farming a little bit more mats, trying to max out. You guys will see, he uses his mats a ton. Anyways, let's slow it down really quick. Circle just pulled. This is second uh, zone. It just appeared. He's going right away. He was already looking for these rotates. He already knew there were some rotates. And there's pretty much no one around him. Let's take a look at the minimap. This is him. There's no one else pretty much around here. He knew that. So he's just going to run. Maybe use these old builds if he needs to. Maybe whack a tree or two. But he's going to try and get as center zone as possible. Um, and when I say a center zone, you're, you may be like, oh yeah, he's not actually in the middle, middle of zone. Yeah, he goes as far in zone as he can before he gets shot. Like, if he gets shot at, he may stop, or he may go a little bit farther. So, sure, it may not be super center zone, but it's still a place that's pretty central that has a high likelihood to pull the next zone. Except for the half-and-half-out zone. Booga plays edge, obviously, because the zone pulls to the edge. Who knows what edge it is, but it pulls to an edge. So, if you're in the middle, there's no chance, 0% chance that you're getting pulled zone. But anyways, rotating by foot, he knows he's pretty safe here. He went early, so there's no one else running with him. So there's a pretty much free rotate. Guess what? Do you guys see him even use one build yet? Nope. This is... That's crazy. Anyways, he didn't even get tagged either. Just like Bizzle. Great with the foot rotates. Didn't get tagged yet. Just because of his good rotates. It's pretty crazy. Um, a couple more people. I'm sure he's going to get tagged now. He's going to use more builds. That's all right. But guess what? He got tagged. He boxes up. He's going to move in a little bit more later. But he's going to stop. Because um, that person is going to keep trying to tag him up. Because the storm surge is coming up. Now, he's going to base up. Shoot all these kids that are behind him. That were not prepared enough to get good positioning. And rotate in time. So now he's able to get some storm surge tags. So he is safe. You guys will see. He'll be like 200 above storm surge. That's a very great number. Now you're super chilling. Another dink. Let's go. At that point, that just shows skill. See, 192. That's how prepared he was. Even though his storm surge tags 
are lower priority because his positioning is such high priority it's so easy to get the tags at that point like if he sees a person he may go for one shot then he's gonna keep running because he knows he needs good positioning and that good positioning will get him more tags so that's what you guys will see positioning 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 he's just gonna go every time and positioning is greater uh, than mats so he's gonna use a lot of mats to get to good positioning you guys will see he's gonna get down to very low builds it's gonna be crazy let me turn off my FPS because that is annoying me get out of here all right oh he's only been tagged once so far that's another amazing thing even though he's prioritizing this positioning he's getting good positioning without getting tagged too much um, you will see he does prioritize loot drops as well, the supply drops, because obviously a guaranteed pad and a possibility at an RPG. If you get an RPG, you've pretty much won the game, especially if you're a good player like uh, Bugga and you can uh, uh, conserve mats and then take height with that RPG. So we'll see. I'm going to do a little fast forward until the storm surge ends. Nothing too exciting. He's just looking in his box. Uh, yikes. But let's keep watching. Uh, like I was saying, he does land at the weather station. Uh, he had an uncontested. Boom. Do you hear that? Zone pulled right away. He's going. He's going. He's going up this hill. He is going to get tagged up a little bit. But that is okay, because guess what? He's going to have great positioning. This is him, this white dot right here. He's pushing towards center. Pushing, pushing, pushing towards center. That guy opens. He's looking, because he knows, hey, there's a base here. This guy's probably going to open at me. So he's going to just use a little build so he's safe. That is a pretty central position right now. You guys will see he does push forward uh, more into zone in a little bit. But that's a great position to be in. Especially with the circle not even closing yet. Storm Surge, by the way, is active. But he's 172 above, so he doesn't really care. Doesn't need any tags. But keep watching his mats. They're going to go down. They're going to go pretty low. I'm sure most of you guys do not use this many mats. There's a reason why Booga is good at solos, because he uses mats. He said, if you die and you did not have zero mats, you did something wrong. And that is a great quote by him, because if you die with maybe a thousand mats, you definitely did something wrong. Like, you could have been building way more. You could have been building, like, a hundred structures that could have definitely probably saved you. Um, if you got keyed, then and he died with all those mats, I would say you just gotta work on the mechanics then. Um, or you just gotta like build more. Be uh, less conservative if you're getting Debbie heat. Because if you get killed with that many mats, what's the point of it? Like, I'd rather use all my mats in a mid game fight than just die in that mid game fight. But, anyways, let's watch him. See, there is a supply drop here. He does notice this. He's gonna run over for that because he wants that pad guaranteed and he wants a chance at an rpg um he does get tagged up a little bit that's all right because it is it does pay off we get sniped actually sorry that's all right but he does have the minis to heal up that was the first heavy tag that he took but he's gonna go over face up get this free pad which is gonna help him because he's able to save hundreds of mats because he's able to place his own pad quite fantastic Another thing, we'll talk about confidence really quick. So Booga, he did okay in the in the solo FNCS. He placed top 40. I would uh, I'd say that's a great placement. But for Booga, a lot of people are like, oh, he should be doing better, you know. Um, he was saying one thing why he didn't do so good is because he went confident. He did switch his bind shortly before the solo FNCS. Um, but then he did switch back to his World Cup binds uh, because he said... I wasn't really confident it wasn't uh, what I liked. I wasn't really used to it, and uh, he he felt like pressure to change his binds because his were like not optimal, as some people would say, right? So that that goes for you guys as well. If you guys are not confident in changing your binds, but your friends like, yo, you should change your binds, you should change your binds, but you don't really want to, you shouldn't. But again, look at this. He's going for more positioning. He sees that guy moves. So if you see someone moving or building their own base. They're not going to shoot you. So he goes right away because he sees that. That's the only guy that's going to shoot him. Or maybe like a heavy sniper all the way from Salty. But that's not a big concern. But look, he's already in zone. 
take a look at all these people that are not all these people down here they're gonna be run towards and probably launch padding maybe or foot rotating he can get heck attacks maybe even a pick i don't think he does this time but that there's a high possibility for that because he's already set up in zone he's chilling keep watching his mats so i keep going down it's kind of it's kind of scary not gonna lie there we go getting some tags on someone who's not already in zone But this is a great position to be in. He has seven minis, amazing ammo. He can spray everyone and that launch pad. So, Booga again using his pad. He's gonna do it, I believe, on the sixth zone, not on the half and half. Uh, yeah, so I believe. Um, but we'll see his mats. We're gonna see how he gets an impact frag. You can see him frag out this game. Uh, this was probably his best game. He got the most kills. Um, and you'll just see why he's such a good solo player. But unfortunately, he was not able to get many of these games. He got W keyed, or he got like beamed a couple games. Um, that was a little unfortunate for him. But I still say top 40 placement. That's all right. Um, it's just he's got, he's got to work on something such as the confidence. He already knows that. He said it himself. So you guys know yourself better than anyone else. So I think on these new binds, he's gonna do great. Um, he's very good at adapting, so I think he's also going to be great in this new season with this new charged shotgun and whatnot. So I think it's going to be pretty, pretty good. I think we'll see a good performance from uh, Bugger. I think a top 10 performance in this MSTS. That's what I'm expecting. Just a very good player overall. So you guys will see in this end game also how he conserves mats so well. He's so good at playing low mats. Because he gets to the dead side, he's able to save a lot of mats. It's amazing. That was probably the worst replay lag I've ever seen. See, zone pulls, he's kind of close. He's got to go a little far. But he's going to go pretty early on this rotate as well. But right now, just gathering info. Especially if you're going to run by these old builds. He's trying to look, see if there's anyone in these builds, anyone in these cones that may just pop out and shoot him. Sees one kid goes. I think he's going to follow that person, and he does. Being aware of these old builds, stays away from them. That's good. He is almost in zone now. He's probably uh, three more boxes away from being in. Another thing Buka does, he, he runs a little, he boxes up. Runs a little, boxes up. That's what he did in World Cup. But except he did it with shockwaves. You shockwave, box up. Shockwave, box up. Shockwave, box up. That's how he's able to play on low mats. Even though he may not have shockwaves or shadow bombs, you can still go a little, box up. Go a little, box up. And you can save a lot of mats and shield. He saw that guy getting focused and crack, Try to do a little spraying. Anyways, now he is in zone. Take a look at his mats. He only has 400 mats going into the sixth zone. He does have a pad though. But this is not enough mats for long. Maybe it'll only get him to one more circle at best. He gets a little bit farther in. That is a good play by him. Especially maybe he gets sprayed, maybe he gets focused. Maybe he could look to get an impact right now on someone next to him. Probably he will not though because he does have that launch pad. He does not want to get killed right now. Another thing, right now, you gotta do your checklist. Right now, you're in your box, you're chilling. If you know where you want to go with your pad, you know where you're gonna place it, then you're good. Now you gotta check your guns, um, check that they're all reloaded. Um, also, if I were him, I'd put the minis in one slot, but whatever. It's nice, it's a tiny thing. Um, but you know, it's just like these small things like this. Do I have ammo? You know, do I have this? The only reason why I'd say combine the minis is because what if you run over some loot endgame and pick up maybe a heavy sniper or an RPG, you know? I think that'd be great, but maybe he's also doing that so he doesn't accidentally pick up a shotgun. He does try and go for this loot. So, you see, it does end up failing. Um, and I think he doesn't use that other pad because he is pretty weak. He's basically only white HP because he has 100 effective HP not gonna go for that because he could end up just getting 
sprayed, you know, focused. He could die, potentially. It's just one spaz shot. So he uses his own. That's a great play, but look now. 13 builds. He can't do much with this. Now this is impact frag. That's his biggest priority right now. A little positioning is really pushed down. Um, so his positioning now is just positioning near other players so he can get impact frags. That is his biggest priority right now. He's gonna drop down, snag some loot. Do you see that was quick? He took that wall with a shotgun, so that person could not edit on him while he was getting the loot. That was a great play. You gotta be aware of that if you have a, one of these uh, purple or uh, gold sh shotguns, because they do like 75 damage, I believe, to the wall, something like that, so it insta breaks. If we get an impact frag here, picks up some of the maps. Ooh, I feel bad about this. I, want, I gotta go back to this really quick, because how much mats are on the ground uh oh i'm spinning in circles there's wood oh he picked up zero mats oh he must have picked up like the 50s but that's a lot of mats that he could have got you guys will see he's gonna be low on mats so maybe spending a little bit more time in storm just to get some of the loot from it destroys this kid actually his kill was stolen Whew, that was close to he's able to get out of that gets another kill oh my goodness he's just rolling through these kids right now he goes up that's a great play. He knew going down would be bad because there's way too many people down there. Too congested. And anyways, it goes up a hill. He probably got stuck and would die down there if he didn't go back and storm and back up. Now he has 11 builds, so um, he's got to be careful. He's still looking for these impact frags. It does pull back, so he is able to use these old builds. Uga now trying to get a refresh. Uh, another thing, he's not overcommitting. He does have one build. Oh, able to get the kill. I may have gone to loot, but he was low HP. He did not know how low. He gets another kill. He did. He got none of the mats again. Uga has gone zero mats from all these strikes. Get in the box. Unfortunately, he dies. Uh, he probably was unaware of how much HP he had. Um, if he was able to get the mats, which he should have, if he got those mats, uh took the launch pad, boxed up, then was able to pop the minis which he still had. Because he probably didn't know he was only 60 HP hopping in a box. But anyways, from Bugger, that was an amazing, incredible performance by him. It was a ninth place with four kills. That's a good game. That'll give you a lot of points. And a great job to him. Top 40 in the uh, FNCS Invitational. I think, uh, like he said, once he gets more confident with his uh, original binds, then I'll do much better. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you guys want to support me, you guys can use code Pigmento in the Fortnite item shop. And that's it.